Hello everybody and welcome to part 5 of Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course. So in the previous video I hope you had fun and played a little around with creating the very basic objects and scenes. And now we are gonna get a little bit deeper into the details and I will explain what those, so mostly what those icons here do and why is it important that we are uh, learning this many things that might seem a little bit abstract right now so you might be wondering why is this rotating thing even important to me at this point i don't see it going anywhere but just 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 keep watching and trust me it's it's really gonna be important in the few more videos um so yeah uh speaking of viewport um, you might have already noticed that you can freely adjust the workspaces when you hover your mouse button up over the edge of any of the workspaces you can actually change their sizes if you don't like your 3d viewport you can make it very very small if you want and that's why, because the, the whole philosophy of Blender is to make it as you to, to make it as you want it to be. So if you're if you want to use Blender for animation, you already have a setup workspace, which is here. And it what you see here is actually completely possible to, to create from any, any other uh, work area. So that means I can really rearrange the, this, this workspace we have here so it looks like this. I will show you how but just want to let you know we have those multiple work working areas. Each one of them has a different, uh, different meaning and purpose. This is a material setup window. Uh, again, this is an animation. Uh, rendering um compositing which allows us to to do some crazy stuff after the rendering is finished scripting is more for a uh, geeks and people who like coding um, and adding their own stuff to blender this is actually also pretty pretty useful area um, texture paint this is honestly something i never do in blender so i won't pretend i know what's happening here uv editing uh, we'll be getting into that later, but basically this is the, the area where you uh, define how the image textures, which are loaded here, are displayed on the 3D mesh. Here we have our beloved cube, but you can use any other object. S um, sculpting, this is the area where, well, it's self-explanatory, and here you can sculpt. Uh -huh your objects um, sculpting means uh, sculpting is a different modeling it's a, it's a different modeling technique where you do things much more organically uh, it, it, it looks a little bit more like painting so perhaps we'll get into that later in the course and modeling this is something we'll be focusing on uh, in the next few more uh, in the next few videos. So you can see uh, the modeling, especially when you have a fresh Blender file, uh, looks pretty much the same as the the main layout. But you might notice the difference that the cube here has some some other uh, features visible. In a difference to this one except of the color obviously but also the 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 content we see here changes when we switch those two mo uh, two layouts and as you can see here we have a few more things we can choose from so when i switch to edit mode it actually looks the same whoops yeah um so this is one thing you should remember that some of the working areas uh, can have multiple ways of how they work so this this is a 3d viewport 
and we can choose from different things uh, that can be done in the 3D viewport j just by itself. So again, you can see I can choose the sculpting mode, exactly the same one we can see here. It looks a little bit different, but I will explain it later. Uh, we can choose edit mode, as, a, as I mentioned. We can cho choose vertex paint, weight paint and stuff. I won't be getting into those. So, you, As I mentioned in the very first, first video, if you don't understand what's happening, what are all those options, you shouldn't be scared. There's really a lot of things to learn in Blender. So just take it uh, one step at a time. So edit mode is something we will get into a little bit uh, later, but we'll get there. And before we do that, I want to still uh, show you a few more things regarding the workspaces we have. So you might have already uh, noticed that by yourself, that by pointing your mouse cursor here in the corners and you might have clicked and did something like this by mistake here or here or here or here and if you if you are like me you probably panicked that you broke something you just press ctrl n and and created new blender and started working uh trying to forget what just happened but you shouldn't be afraid of it um, this is actually something, I would say that's one of the best Blender features, which allows you to create your own working areas the way you want them to be and to work. So for example, we can have a 3D viewport exactly like this if you want to. So for example, you can have a top view here, you can have back view here. And you can have right view here. So when we move our object right now, we can see the transformation. Uh, sorry, I don't know. This is a top view. Yeah, uh, we can see the transformation is happening in all viewports at the same time. This is very, very useful uh, when you're doing a modeling. So you want to see how the, the model, uh, how its look changes in, in other uh, you know, view, views. So for example, you can have a drawing in the back here. So showing you the side of the model and you can have a drawing uh, from, from the top perspective of the thing you're modeling. So, so by editing the mesh, the object here in the perspective view, you can see how it um, affects the model from the side, from the top, and so on. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, I would say, <clears throat> oh yeah, I, I didn't mention that here. You can also change by pressing this button. Same, same here, to be honest, in any other viewport. Um, you can change from perspective to orthographic view. And orthographic view is, well, it's a view without the perspective distortion. So, so here you can see when you look at those edges here that they go and have this perspective distortion happening. And when you change to orthographic, the, those edges are parallel and will never cross. There is no perspective distortion. and. Um, working in orthographic view becomes very useful later when we do the edit mode object changes. But yeah, keep watching and we will get there. So how do we fix Blender? Let's say you destroyed it by dividing the spaces like this, like that. Well, how, how do I even do that? So yeah. Uh, from the beginning. When you hover your mouse button around uh, any of the... I would suggest using the bottom corners for that. It can also happen from, from the upper ones. But yeah. Um, when you hover your mouse button around the corners, you see it changes, the, the cursor changes its look. And when you click 
and click and hold your mouse button and now depending if you move left or right from here two things will change you see this is the window I'm hovering my cursor around so if I click and hold and move in the direction of the window uh, this the screen uh, will will divide but I will just show you how, how it works on this window now again if I click and hold and move to the direction of, of the window I'm hovering around over uh, this the space will will split but if I do it otherwise so I left click hold and now move outside of the window can see this arrow appears and now when I'm holding my mouse button still I'm not releasing it I can move and select if this area uh, eats this area or if this area eats this area so let's say this one eats this so I release my button uh, my mouse button now and you can see the screen merged um, obviously you're not able to merge this screen to to all of those at this point because when I when I left click hold and move my mouse uh, above I can't do this because blender can't decide if this goes here or maybe here or maybe here or so first I would have to merge or all, all those windows and then mm, make them make them uniform so I will show you how to do that so yeah um, again I'm hovering my mouse button uh, left clicking and holding and now I move to the right so you can see um, and I release the mouse button I can I do it again so let's say I wanna <coughs> I wanna move a merge okay let's say let's set it up like this so it's more visible I want to merge this screen I want I want this screen to eat this one so I can either start from here from this screen or I can start from this one it, it doesn't matter that much so I will just show you even though I want this screen to eat this one I can still start uh, from 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 this screen so I will left click and hold and now I move to the right I'm not releasing my mouse button and now I move to the left and now I release it so but now now I will start from this screen so I left click and hold if I move to the upwards it breaks the screen I left click and hold and when I move downwards now it eats the screen so again left click and hold move to the right it merges um, if I do left click and hold here and move here so it, it divides the screen again so so if I move the if I left click and hold and move to the direction of the screen I'm coming from then it divides it if I move if I left click and hold and move outside then it creates the arrow and allows me to to merge the screens so now I want this one to, to eat this one. Left click and hold and drag. Left click and hold and drag. And now we can finally let this screen eat the above one. So left click, hold and drag. Well, we fixed the blender and made it great again another thing worth knowing about the 3d uh, about the workspaces in general is that you can uh, not only you can divide them but you can also choose what's happening in which of the newly created workspaces so after uh, fixing the 3d viewport I will destroy it again like this and in the upper left corner and it applies to any of the window those two this one and 3d viewports and and the timeline below you can see there is this icon it looks differently depending on the window you have so in the 3d viewport it's always this icon 
in the tool shelf here it's always this kind of icon in the uh, outliner or layer manager it's it's this icon so you can actually change what's displayed in the area you've created so let's divide this area again and we can choose whatever we want we can do the info panel here we can do a graph editor here we can do some animation stuff here and we can do shader editor here so you don't know what's happening right now if you open the blender and it looked like this you would panic again probably i would do um so yeah let's let's get back to what we had oh and by the way now when we have all those different spaces let's maybe make it more clear so we have a 3d thing happening here we have some strange animation thing happening here something we don't understand yet here and the thing that changes constantly some coding geeky stuff here so now when i left click and hold here and move my mouse i will make this scary thing uh, bigger and i can make it eat all of the other workspaces but once i did that i can still change to 3d viewport and and have it as it was so um that shows us how powerful the blender is in terms of of creating your own workspaces so for example sometimes i'm working on a 3d scene and i would like to have a clear view on what's happening with with my models um from 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 the side view for example i i will just show it how it works so let's say i have this this uh, surface here i'm adding uh, a monkey and i want it to to be uh, aligned completely uh, with with the floor so i would have to switch to this kind of view and now do it very precisely but i i don't see i'm not seeing how does it look in the perspective right so i can split the 3d view i can set up a camera like this here and now i can align it the way i want to so let's say like this or if it lies a face down here I can see how it looks in a perspective view and here I can see if it uh, if it touches the ground evenly the way I want to or let's say it lies on its head I want it to to be aligned perfectly like this and here I can see how it looks maybe I want to rotate it uh, sorry you see I broke it maybe I want to rotate it around the z-axis as well so I will switch switch to the top view in here and now if i rotate it you see how it looks here in the side view and i can see what's happening here in the perspective view so now you can see why did we learn all those rotation uh, transformation tools etc because it's when you combine it with different uh, views, with different viewports, um, it starts to become much more powerful than just you know, um, than 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 you would just think it's well a useless tool. I don't know what I what I'm using it for. So let's say I'm I'm I want to scale this mouse, uh, this this monkey upwards, but still I have to fix its position on the floor so I can do it quickly from like having a view on the side I don't have to guess in the perspective view well is it is it uh, good enough or not I can I can have a very clear view here and if I want to rotate it perfectly uh, because when I when I press R here you can see 
the rotation kind of uh, crosses the, the, the floor surface. I don't want this to be happening, right? Uh, you see, I, I don't want this to be happening. So I can switch to the top view. And now I know if I rotate it just in just from this view, right? It's it's the same as if I was pressing if if uh, if I was doing something like this in the perspective view, but I can go to the view with I can go to the viewport with the top view selected and just press R and I know that it's rotating in in this uh sorry, in this axis only. So I hope I hope I really hope this this all makes sense. <laughs> um again as I did it already I would recommend you to play around yourself and and you know understand the the, the way you can actually uh, arrange those spaces those those work areas to your needs. And before we finish this video, I still want to show you a couple of more things. Uh, you might be working with Blender and then you, let's say for example, just did something like this. And you don't know what the heck happened. And you again, you will probably panic, press Ctrl N. Okay, let's get back to something we know how it works. And what, what just happened before was nothing that scary. There are two shortcuts in Blender that allow you to go full screen with any of the work areas you hover your mouse cursor around, uh, above. So let's say when I hover my mouse button, uh, my mouse cursor here, I don't have to click anything. It just, you see, when I hover it, the the color of this bar here changes, uh, except the viewport. But here you can see it it becomes brighter. Same when I move here right now, and when I move here, so that that tells us uh, what is the active uh, wor working area at the moment. So when I hold Control key and press space, this uh, creates a full screen view of the work area I'm hovering my mouse uh, above. So when I do it with 3D viewport, I have this nice full screen. And let's say when I go to shading and I do it over here, press Control space, I have this whole uh, node editor visible. And I do it here. It's the viewport again, the file browser, uh, basically any area you hover your mouse up, like over. There is also one more thing when you press Ctrl, uh, Space, and Alt, those three keys at the same time. Whoops. Um, yeah, you have to hold Ctrl, Alt, and then press Space. Then it's a full screen, but without any of the, uh, you know, tool. Uh, toolbars or information uh, panels you can see in the standard full screen. So standard full screen is control space and this uh, very minimal minimalistic uh, full screen is control alt space. And to exit exit it you have to use the same key combination so control alt and space. And again, it works over any other area as well. So this video itself is becoming a bit long right now, so I will I will end it up here. And in the next video, I will explain the shading modes we have here in Blender. So thanks for watching.